What's going on? All right, so team, this game should be an important confidence booster. By the way, before we jump into it, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe for more Comp pro -Am gameplay. But this gameplay should be a confidence booster because we went against one of those very glitchy small point guards. The thing about playing against these type of guys that can just run off, throw up a jump shot, and it's always green no matter the contest, is that if you can guard that while also learning how to defend bigs, then there's nothing in 2K you can't guard. And once you become that good of a defender, everything else is just icing on the cake. So, this guy right here, this point guard, he's one of those guys that learn how to use mismatch expert, learn how to, you know, manipulate the system. But pretty much every time he shoots it, he probably has a 99-3 ball, you know, 99 ball handle, you know, things like that. He's 5'11", you know, typical meta point guard this year. The crazy thing about it is I never thought I would see a game where making a guy that small would have been something people look to do. Um, not to say they don't have value. I know people are fans of Nate Robinson, Spud Webb, you know, and smaller players. But I, I just never thought in a million years that this type of person, as you see him knock down the three, that this type of player would be so important in a 2K video game. I just never thought it. I would think guards would want to be anywhere from 6'2 to 6'5. Alright, that's, that's a pretty good height for a guard. Good ball handling, able to shoot the ball. And, you know, the way you can make the build could, should have decent defense for a guard. So... That's what I always thought. But if we can go against these type of teams and beat them, imagine when we play the teams that have these same type of builds, but they just have a little bit more chemistry. What I'm saying is if we can consistently play against guys like this and show that we can win games, then when we play against teams with a little bit more chemistry, we should be a little bit better prepared because in my opinion, like, nothing changes. For me, when I'm guarding that point guard, it's about finding out his dribble combination what's his go-to move. All right, once I figure out his go-to move, I'm going to take it away. Once I take his go-to move away, guards are smart. What they will then do is pick on a weaker defender. That's something I could never be mad about because I would do the same thing. Like, if somebody could guard me, I would force the team to force that defender to switch or um, call out a back screen and take advantage of somebody that's just not as good defensively. I mean, it's the proper strategy when you're playing basketball. With that being said, defending bigs. All right, that point guard and the big man playing pick and roll is meta. All right, the reason why it's meta is because guards have kind of gone away from isolation basketball to a style that allows them to use the screener to always stay on offense. That's the way I like to look at it. So if you're playing two on two and it's make it take it, if the screen is set, the guard comes off and throws it up, the big man should technically have a free roll to the basket. So if two guys come up on the guard, then the guard should be able to throw it down to the big man for an easy basket. And if for some reason both defenders stay back on the big, the guard should have open three ball. And all this does is always allow them to remain on offense. 
the big man is always going to be the better rebounder. Uh, so, that just is what it is. You will have to have a guy that's very good at showing, allowing you time to recover in order to stop another team from just constantly remaining on offense and getting offensive rebounds and offensive kickouts. Um, so, as I, like I said in the last video, what I want to do is tell y'all some good things that we did. And then I want to tell y'all some bad things that we did. And I think I'm going to switch it up. I want to start with the bad and then lead into the positive because I, I always like to keep things positive. The bad thing we did this particular game, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, is we didn't do a good job of building momentum. Meaning like, this first quarter was very stagnant. And to be honest with you, the way the team was defending us, I felt like we could have had about like 18 to 22 points in the first quarter. Before the fact that the quarter's almost over, the score is only 9 to 8, we did not do a good job of execution to build momentum. All right, either we passed up shots or we were very hesitant on shots, or we made their defense look better than what it actually was. All right. Uh, identify their defense early. Like, I believe they was in 2-3 for the most part. And obviously, if we come out consistently in 5 out, they can't necessarily play the 2-3 they're trying to play. So it looks more like a 3-2. And I'm forcing that big man to choose whether he want to protect the paint or protect the corner. They, they want to play. Most teams want to play 2-3. It keeps the big man right by the basket to protect the rim and get rebounds. It allows the guards to go for passing lane steals and get out in transition and run. So most teams want to play 2-3. Because we play 5 out, teams cannot play 2-3. 5 out beats 2-3 every time. All right? Even though I can't shoot the ball, because I have the ball handling ability, I'm still fast enough to beat the center off the dribble, which you'll see later in the game. And that's important because if I can't prove that I can still score, even though I can't shoot, we're going to run into a world of problems. The only times we really lose games is if I can't score. I want y'all to keep that in mind. Like, the only time we really lose games is when I can't score. Whether their defense is really good against me or I'm not doing a good job of putting the ball in the bucket, which is not just on me. That's if a pass is late coming down the pane or I'm trying to get the spacing for the mid-range but the spacing around me isn't good or too many people moving at one time so I can't properly identify a scoring angle, yeah, that's, that's going to happen. So some good things that we did is we played against better competition. All right, we played against guys that can actually beat us. And the thing about that is, the more competition you play, the better you will become at the game, the better you become at team chemistry, the better individual player you'll become. All right, another positive thing. Our defense, team defense, has been looking amazing. All right, I think everybody is starting to understand that it does not matter who comes down with the rebound? If you can sacrifice for one another, then that's all that matters. It doesn't really matter who gets the rebound. If you're down there guarding the big and you learn how to box out, that's going to help the team win. All right, if you understand that it's not about you trying to come up with all these stats and be aggressive on the stat sheet. All right, inside the tab where it shows the box scores of the games we play, there's a rule of thumbs. If you follow that rule of thumbs, and just remember to compare what I put in there versus what the other team did, it'll tell you how you performed. All right, I don't care that you have an A-plus every game. Like, no, it's not about that. It's about the team getting the dub. If you won't, 
If you care about just trying to be an individual, then the team is going to suffer because of it. All right, that's, that's all I can say about that. But our team defense has been looking amazing. Um, offensively, like I said, that's something I still need to continue to develop, but it starts with us learning plays. And yeah, man, other than that, this was a a great chance for us to keep getting better. Um, I do want to get people better at ball handling and um, decision making because there's going to come a time where I might not be here. Somebody might have to like step up and be that point guard. And you ain't necessarily got to play like me or do it the way I would do it. Even though I have shown a successful way of doing things, um, all I want you to do is develop, you know, small things that I've learned over the years so it won't take you, you know, all these years to gain that knowledge. Like, I had to learn through trial and error. Now, if I can get that that IQ and pass it along and somebody can receive it. Mainly, I'm looking at montage. Um, possibly looking at Cincy, I want you to handle the ball a little bit more, but at the same time, y'all yeah, realize you will have to have a build that allows you to do so. Um, over the years, I'm pretty sure I've shown y'all you don't need like a, a high ball handle or speed with ball to be successful as a point guard. You just gotta know what the hell you're doing. And since y'all make bills that have a little bit better ball handling and make bills that are a little faster than mine, it should be easier for y'all to do the things that I want to pass along to y'all. All right? But in order to be a really good point guard, you got to understand what the go-to move is somebody's going to do and how to keep making them do something different. All right, you have to learn how to not get beat with the same move while at the same time making it tougher for them to come up with a new move. All right, if somebody hits you with a behind the back, that should be the only time they hit you with that behind the back, especially in a team game. But like I said, the best way to learn, learn this is go play 1v1. Also, offensively, you have to develop a go-to move. All right, and really, if you're going to play handle the ball, you should have more than one. I know for me, I got a crossover, and then I got the ace play, which I pass it and cut down the middle. So that's two go-to moves right there for me. All right, for y'all, if y'all want to take a step back three, that could be one go-to move. If y'all want to run the ace play, that could be another one. And if y'all want to keep keep developing stuff, that's how you become a better offensive player. It's just by trial and error. Find something that you're good at. You know, do it till you blew in the face. Till it's just second nature, and then just go from there. But yeah, man, this this has been great. Hopefully, we can keep playing more games. The more games we play, the better we'll be. But. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of the game. It's been lethal. I'm out.